told me that this program they are launching, I felt very happy because so many teachers around and so many colleges are coming forward now to organize lots of different kinds of online shows, online programs, training events, and all kinds of learning opportunities for their colleague teachers. This is a wonderful initiative. I heartily congratulate the principal, the Department of English, and all the members of staff of Government Degree College Kupam for this wonderful initiative. Uh, the topic today is online learning and teaching for English teachers. So during these COVID days, during the lockdown times, and some people, when they feel gloomy and they feel that frustrated, they think there's not much to do. The students are not there around, the colleges are closed, nothing much is happening, and they do not find any opportunity around, and they think that all doors are closed. No. Actually, there is plenty of opportunity for every one of us both to learn as well as to teach. So that's what exactly we are going to do in case we want to utilize these times more effectively, more productively, more rewardingly, more satisfyingly. What is it that we can do to keep ourselves active, to benefit someone and to keep the momentum? That's exactly what we are going to discuss today. So the topic suggested by Dr. Rajya Lakshmi is online learning and teaching for English teachers, of course, in brackets during these pandemic times, but that's not very relevant because this is relevant to all times. Pandemic or no pandemic, corona or no corona, lockdown or no lockdown, these are relevant to all times. That's what we are going to see. So I'm very briefly, I'm going to discuss four things today, uh, what this online teaching and learning is, and what are the tools available for learning first, because every teacher must be a lifelong student. So what are the opportunities available for me to learn? What are the available opportunities for me to teach? And what's the future? Perhaps the last one, I don't spend much time on that. Maybe if I get one or two minutes, I'll spend that time on telling you what could the future be and otherwise my focus will be on items two and three okay let's move on the first one what's it i don't need to tell you much about that but still let me share a few things about what this online teaching is and then what this online learning is what is it that we need to know how significant is that and is there anything that we can do about this that kind of things very briefly some introductory remarks there are about 32 crore students in India, 32 crore school children in India who are affected by the lockdown. Who said this? The government of India had said this. So 32 crore people roughly is about one fourth of the population and that is the size of the population that goes to school. That means every single student going to school anywhere in the country has been affected. Such a big number. And you can imagine how serious the pandemic is. But luckily for us, the online learning and teaching opportunities are as ubiquitous as the pandemic itself. So the more serious the pandemic is, the more these opportunities have opened up. And UNICEF has told us that 98.5% of the school and college students around the world have been impacted by the lockdown. So be it New Zealand, which was one of the first countries to open up after the lockdown, and countries are still struggling very seriously with the pandemic, like India, for instance. So all around the globe, everywhere, everybody is affected. 98.5% is almost the whole world. Every university, every school, every college, everywhere has been affected and very seriously impacted. So that's exactly why we are considering this option that we have. The map in the background tells you the kind of uh, the, the way the countries have been affected. So there is no country left. Every country is affected. Every color suggests the percentage of students affected there. So taking a cue from here. So let's all consider doing something so that 
we are on the learning scale going up and also our students are benefited right what exactly is this this online teaching and all that is this something new or do we not already know about this let just see this and maybe if we can make some quick notes on this and further perhaps we can move so i'll just show you a very simple video which is available to all of us on youtube and we can download it we can use it in our classes we can also see it so that we understand what this learning curve has been what is the history of learning and this is just a two minute clip just watch it i'm sure you are able to see that and also listen to the audio 500 and bc paper started being made in china manuscripts printing press i know the evolution of the printing press i think all of you are aware of that we are already into the 1900s some of you might remember that overhead projector i think all of you are familiar with these times 1980 90 whatever even young teachers perhaps are familiar with what has been happening in the last 20 30 years so what i would like to tell you is that what we call this online learning is not really new so it has been of course learning has been a very very old thing for several thousands of years learning teaching has been happening and we also know that there are lots of other things associated with that gradually progressing in the last 200 years i mean technologically we have advanced a great deal coming to our own pace coming to people like us what is this online learning i mean i'll show you this very i mean this is a long video but i'll show it to you for just a minute to tell you what happened in our own state in our own place in hyderabad not far away in our own place this is one of the presentations that i had made for english lecturers this is maybe the first two by this list you are given an introduction sorry sorry okay i think you're not able to see that it's okay i leave that maybe you're not able to watch that that's okay right coming back to this one second give me a moment there was a problem with that audio don't worry i think you can see the screen again now okay even if you by chance cannot see the audio or video for the time being it's okay but i think you can follow this uh what i told you is that even we have been not left in this race and over the last 20 25 years we have been engaged in some kind of online learning though the kind of online learning that we have today but in some other form in some other format we have been able to do this 
I remember more than 20 years ago, I did some uh, studio recorded lessons for the intermediate board. More than some 15 years ago, we established what we call that Nipuna Television, Mana Television, and today we call that ETV and so many other names we have. And we produced lessons on a large, massive scale, and we offered them to school students and college students in different ways. So online is learning is not unknown to us. That's just what I wanted to say. Today, we have an opportunity to infuse technology into our education and to make our classrooms much more interactive and much more student-centered. And naturally, we need to use them to become skillful teachers, right? To become talented teachers. One question that often, wherever I go, wherever I speak, to teachers come and ask me, sir, uh, if technology uh, becomes uh, much more uh, prevalent, uh, it's, it's uh, easily accessible, uh, will teachers lose their jobs? This is a question that often people ask me. So I tell them that technology will never replace a teacher. How can technology replace a teacher? See, like an ATM has not closed down banks, this technology can never replace a teacher. Uh, there will be more, a greater need for teachers. If teachers, perhaps there is a day tomorrow when teachers don't have to go to the class and teach students directly, perhaps they have to teach students from a distance. Or if a machine can teach all the students in all the classes and outside online, perhaps we have to teach those machines. If a robo comes in and the robo says, okay, I'll take care of this class, we have to teach the robots to teach the students. So teachers are safe, but teachers are not safe from another point of view. What's that point? So we have, do not have a threat from technology, but we have a threat from people who know technology. If I don't update myself, if I don't pick up the threads of the current technical resources that I have available, and if I do not use them to make my classrooms more student-centric and communicative, what happens? Somebody who knows technology, right? Somebody who is familiar with that and proficient in that is going to take my place. I'll be thrown out and that person will be there. So the threat to my job is not from technology, but the threat to me is from somebody who knows technology better than I do. So if I have to continue as a teacher, if I'm passionate about being a teacher, what I should do is I must learn the necessary current contemporary technologies that are essential to make my teaching more productive. Right? If you keep this one point in mind, I think it will be very easy for you to follow why we have to make our classrooms more interactive. So online has become some kind of a panacea in these especially pandemic situations, but pandemic situation or no, I mean, there were, if they, even if there were no lockdown, what would have happened? Online teaching, blended teaching, and a hundred other kinds of high flex forms of teaching were waiting at the door. They were just ready to step in. Any moment they would come in. Only lockdown facilitated their entry and it proved to be a blessing in disguise to us, to the education world. So even if we had not had this lockdown, maybe in the next one year, two years, three years, all the I mean, technical tools that we are using today would have become essential for us to use very soon. So lockdown is only one pretext, that's all, that made it a little faster. But otherwise also, even without the lockdown also, this would have stepped in. There are so many things already happening around and all that is one kind or the other of the online teaching learning process. Let's now move on to the next part of my presentation. What are the tools available to teachers right, for learning? Of course, when I say teachers, it need not be English teachers, it can be any, but most of my examples come from the English teachers. And when I say these are available to teachers, they are available to students also, to the general public also, to anybody. Most of the tools that I've chosen are free. Anybody can lay their hands on them, anybody can use it. And 
Some of them have paid versions also. So if you want to use the free resources that are available online, just to try them and begin improving yourself, equipping yourself with the necessary technology and tools. So what are these? So in case an English teacher wants to improve herself, what are a few things that she needs to do? One, she must do reading, listening, speaking, writing, improve her vocabulary and improve her grammar, improve her pronunciation. These are the things that we need to do, you know, all the language skills. Right, all the teaching skills we need to improve. That's all we can do, and that's all we need to do to become better teachers. So, in case I want to re improve my reading skills, suppose I want to read lots of books which are not available in my library. My college has a small library. I don't have time to sit down there, and maybe I can borrow only one or two books, not many, and I want to read lots of books. So, there is lots of places online the most important one the best in my opinion is project gutenberg the first one so this one you see here this is the most popular online resource for reading any book that you want almost millions of books i'm not exaggerating millions millions of books are available on that resource so just go to gutenberg.org and then search for whatever subject books that you want and open them read them online some of them can be downloaded so you can have them on your own hard disk and then you can read them whenever you want in case you do not have 24 hour internet connectivity or if you are living in a place where internet is not easy to get maybe you can download them and read them from your screen what else do you want? Whatever subject you teach, especially English teachers, I think you can find every single classic that you can think of. Every single book that has been prescribed for study at some level or the other. I, I don't think you find anything not available there. Almost every book that you want is available. So Project Gutenberg is one. Similarly, there are a list of other websites where you can find lots of books if teachers want to read and improve their reading skills and also equip themselves with books that they are need and they find useful and this is one place it's as good as a library on the go the best of the libraries in the world is available on your mobile phone on your desktop all that you need is a device like a mobile phone and an internet connection that's all there is no village today that does not have uh, internet connectivity i think i don't think there is an english teacher who does not have I mean, data on the mobile phone so the first thing your reading skills are easy to improve in fact i would have uh, shown you some of these websites in case we had a longer presentation of three or four hours anyway let's move on the second thing that I'd like to suggest is if you want to improve your listening skills, listening plus, of course, every skill is comprehensive. When you are improving your reading, till you improve your other skills simultaneously. When you are improving your listening skills, again, you improve lots of other skills together. So when you want to improve specifically your listening skills, there are what are called podcasts available. They are excellent resources for you to improve your listening comprehension. And you get examples of authentic use, real life use of English, right? Not, I mean, rehearsed, not dialogue practice, not role plays, but actual real life, for instance, a newscast, right? A newscast is taken and it's used as an example to build a grammar lesson around that. Right? Lots of exercises, grammar, vocabulary building and various different kinds of activities etc etc are built around that so i have some three examples of them at the bottom the uh, you can take a screenshot if you want so esl pod is one of course as i told you already some the earlier the basic versions are free and the advanced versions are uh, paid so esl pod fluent you english digital academy these offer you lots of podcasts one i'll show you breaking news english i would like every one of you 
to try this today itself if possible right breakingnewsenglish.com what they do is every day or maybe every week two or three times they identify some very useful news cost which is conducive to which lends itself to teaching or learning english and they build a whole long lesson around it what do they do they take the lesson they take the news cast uh, i don't know if you can hear that maybe if you can hear that just maybe 30 seconds you can hear no oh, okay. and slow down the aging process new research says that eating clean vegetables can delay the signs of aging. okay so that's how it is but the advantage here is when you are listening i'll, I'll stop this but the, the advantage here is you can listen to it at your chosen speed here for instance there are there are five levels here right level uh, there are actually six levels so if you want to listen to it very slowly word after word with lots of long pauses so if you want to catch every word for instance if you are playing it in your class so suiting the student's ability wherever you maybe you are teaching in a school college where teacher students are very poor in their english very weak and uh, there may be there may be some colleges where the students are bright and they can uh, easily catch it and then in that case you can listen to the same item much faster so you can choose the speed of the delivery that's one advantage that you have then in case while you are listening like you have the scrolling text right if you want to have the text in front of you suppose you have students who are not able to follow many words and then they are not they have the great difficulty in listening or the first time they have listened and the second time they want to check whether what they have listened to is right or wrong or maybe you have given an exercise and they have done that exercise and they would now like to check whether what they have listened to is correct so then you can show them the text also right and then you also can show them the scrolling text as they are reading it once again i will switch it off right as they are reading or as they are listening right they can also have the text scrolling that means whatever is said right in the voice format is also seen on the screen gradually moving up and you can choose the size of the font depending on i mean whatever how far you are from the screen how good your eyesight is how easily you can follow that you can you can set the font to your convenience not only that you also can do lots of grammar exercises already i mean the teacher does not have to worry about creating new grammar exercises right for instance here uh, if you want to build quizzes the quizzes are ready made since there are so many quizzes here right i think there are about 10 15 quizzes built on what they have heard they have listened to a piece maybe 5 minutes right on that 5 minutes based based on that so the students have ready access to quizzes you can use them directly you can take a print out of that and you can administer it in your class then there are more quizzes you can print them and you can have further listening exercises and you have dictation exercise that means you don't have to dictate the text the system the software automatically dictates the text at a certain speed and you can ask your students to write it down and check their listening skills and reading comprehension tests i am showing you only a small part of what's available to your students and to you so if you want to learn listening and other skills based on listening starting from listening you can move on to other skills as well because all skills are usually they typically go together they are not in isolation so if you want to focus on listening and learn all language skills together perhaps this is one website that's extremely good this is completely free if you want you can contribute something to them on your own but it's not compulsory contributions are voluntary but the site is absolutely free and every two or three days a new podcast comes and it offers you a million ways i think i'm, I'm not exaggerating 
uh, several thousands and millions of ways of how you can use the text, the uh, audio, sometimes the video, the grammar exercises. I think even if you, you can spend a whole year just on one lesson, right? So much information is there. Okay, so this is a podcast. All of you, please have your favorite podcast and then you use it for yourself. You use it for your students and you can play them on your mobile phone, your class, and you can ask, encourage your students, you can motivate your students to listen to such things. So they are learning language. They are also learning about the current affairs. Right? Maybe there is some friction between India and China today. There is a ready-made podcast. They're available based on any one global newscast. And then that is a lesson, a ready-made lesson for you, a listening lesson for you. How convenient that is. So please visit this and then do that. Then there are lots of video resources. I think the most popular and one of the best that you can find is Engvid, E-N-G-V-I-D. Engvid offers you lots of grammar lessons and literature lessons on short videos, right? Five minutes, 10 minute videos, which are readily available to you on YouTube. So go to YouTube, search for Engvid, subscribe to that, you get notification about that and also Whenever you want, you can revisit them, listen to them any number of times, and you can improve your language skills again or literature skills, literature again, right? So there are other sources also, Oxford, Online English, Cambridge English, Learn English at dot British Council, et cetera, et cetera. All of them are very, I'm citing only some two or three which are easy to find, which are very renowned and which are popular and which are either free or inexpensive. There are, if you just go and search, for instance, if you just go to YouTube and search videos to learn English, English basic level, English for college students, grammar lessons, some such thing, if you search, I think you'll find several thousands of them. In fact, sometimes searching for them and then finding the right one is difficult, unless you know how to search for that. That also is a skill. So there are lots of video sources, resources, available to you. Learning is fun, learning is easy, and retention is easier. I think no teacher can be so good despite all the wonderful skills that teacher may have, because this video is very well thoroughly rehearsed, thoroughly prepared, presented by the best of the best, right, using the best of the tools. And naturally, if they are on YouTube and if they have been visited by people several thousands of times automatically they should have something good in them right so these are wonderful resources that we can use i wish i had time to show you some of them but uh, i think i've given you the links you can try them yourself okay then there are complete courses audio video courses available to you again on youtube so this what the link that you see here is a video link Right, Crash Course is the name of the uh, name of the production house. So they create lots of English lessons based on English classics and also all subjects, not only English, but all subjects. What is subject? Maybe you are an economics teacher and a political science teacher, or maybe a teacher of some other language. You can search for some good lessons created by Crash House on YouTube, and you can subscribe to that channel also, and you can visit them. I think maybe you can watch it for a few minutes. Let's just see it. Hello, Crash Course. I'm going to watch season one. You can do so over here. Season four of Crash Course Humanity. It might even be like season seven or eight if you count all the science stuff. Whatever. Let's just get started. We're going to start at the beginning of literature, at least a beginning of literature. Sing in me, muse, and through me, tell the story of a man who lets all his shipmates die, lies to everyone he meets, cheats on his wife with assorted nymphs, and takes ten years to complete a voyage that, according to Google Maps, should have taken two weeks. That man is, of course, one of the great heroes of the ancient world. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Odysseus, star of Homer's The Odyssey. Did I just say The Odd at Sea? It's a good pun. 
not an English movie. No. Now everyone knows that you can't properly enjoy a book until you know a lot about its author. So before we discuss the Odyssey, we're going to begin with a biographical sketch of Homer, the legendary blind poet of ancient Greece. Uh, I've just shown you the first two minutes of a two-hour lesson. So this lesson is for two hours. And I've just shown you a small part, the beginning of it. Can we make our classes any better? Right? All that you need in the classroom is right? maybe a screen, or maybe you can even ask your students to bring their phones and then uh, visit it on their own. Or you can give it as some kind of a home assignment, ask them to watch it at homes and then build some questions around and give one or two uh, comprehension questions to them. Or if you want to teach Odysseus tomorrow, maybe watch it today to help yourself. I don't think there can be anything better than such beautifully designed lessons available online. And how much would you pay for that? Nothing. All these thousands of lessons are available to us absolutely free of cost. I don't need to pay them even one rupee. What I pay to is only the electric department, the power bill, and also that internet connectivity bill. Whatever, any way I'm doing that. No other charges. So how beautiful that is, especially for English teachers. And I've seen quite a lot of lessons created by Crash Course. Each one is fantastic, right? Amazingly well made. Right? And you can, of course, like in the case of podcasts, you cannot regulate their speed, but you can have the scrolling caption and then you can read the text if you want. Okay. Then something very easy, something that every teacher can do is to create your own discussion forums with your students, with your colleagues, and with like minded teachers, with people with common interests. Right? kind of things. So one of the best examples that comes to my mind is my own experience with WhatsApp. I created a WhatsApp group. I think some of you in this group also are members of my group. That's how I've come to know of you. Uh, this group has been running for nearly five years and we have 250 members in that. And what are we? We are all English teachers, all 250 of us. What do we do? Whatever are some good resources available, we share them. Whenever we have a question about our practical, personal classroom experience, we either share it with others or we ask a question, we get our doubts clarified, we conduct some discussion forums, we have some, I mean, mutual exchange platform. Right? And how successful it is? Out of the 250, at least some 40, 50 of us are really very active. And we almost every day, there are lots of posts and that, but we follow very strict guidelines, right? We do not allow anybody to post anything not related to ELT. We have a certain chatter of guidelines and we follow it rigorously. And how or, or why it has been so very successful five years? Because we have regulated it ourselves. We don't need any supervisor from above. Like that, why I'm telling you about this personal experience is that every one of you can do that. Every one of you can create your own online forum. And for that, you don't need any technology. WhatsApp is enough. I don't think there is a phone today of any kind, any smartphone without WhatsApp already preloaded. So there is WhatsApp, we receive hundreds and thousands of useless messages instead of that, if I create one forum of English, then let there be only five teachers, no problem. There are two teachers in my college and three teachers somewhere around. There are five or six of us. We are some small forum, but we regulate ourselves. We say that this forum is meant only to exchange our classroom related, subject related, topic related, personal experience with teaching English related experiences. Enough? And similarly, you can create a forum with your students every class. You might already be doing it, but I don't know what you are using it for. So let it not be for just exchanging good mornings, good evenings, and festival greetings and all that, but let it be for some productive use. WhatsApp is enough tool. It's, it's, a, it's a very powerful tool. You can have audios, videos, text messages, and all kinds of files can be uploaded, downloaded, and almost everything that you can do online 
can be done with just WhatsApp, right? The, like WhatsApp, there are lots of other tools also. I mean, we don't have time to go into every one of them, but I'm just telling you, suppose you create a WhatsApp group with your students. What do you do on that? So I have given some suggestions. So what can, for instance, you post a question today. You post a question based on something that you've taught or something that you're going to teach tomorrow. If you have a regular, I mean, chalk and duster class and then regular traditional class, perhaps you are going to uh, text something on that you've already taught. Today you finished a lesson and you post a question and then the students can answer that. Or if you are using something like a flipped class or maybe a hybrid class or whatever, you have uh, you are planning to teach something tomorrow, you post two questions and then you ask them to think of them and come to the class prepared. So question answers, what do they do? They need not immediately answer in the group. That's one possibility, of course, they can answer beforehand. Or because you have posted the question tomorrow, that can be a discussion forum. WhatsApp allows multiple ways of allowing people to respond to that. For instance, you have created a broadcast group. You others cannot respond to you at all in the group. Or if you have created a regular group, but you have restricted admission to the admin, uh, posting to the admin, the students cannot post there, but they can only send individual responses to you. Or if you think your students are, I mean, bro, I mean, uh, mature and they will not misuse that platform that has been created. They will not uh, post anything unwanted. So you can keep it open and then every student can post. One can see another's answers and everybody benefits from everybody's post. Okay, so multiple ways of handling the same platform. And most importantly, you share something that you know. It does not rest with you. It does not remain with you. So you have seen a new book, for instance, you have seen a new link today to a good source, a good web page, so you post it and others also might benefit from it. All that you need is just a smartphone and an internet connectivity and such online discussion forums are extremely useful to update yourself, to upskill yourself and to improve yourself as a teacher. So I was telling you, though, so uh, the question asked by some teachers, so will I become obsolete? Will I be eliminated by the online uh, platforms or online tools? No, if I update myself, no, but I need to use some of these platforms available to me. How much do you pay to WhatsApp? Nothing. It's an absolute uh, free thing. Then there are lots of different mobile apps, especially I would like you to introduce them to your students not only to benefit yourself, but if you want to benefit your students, introduce them, lots of them. So I think this huge list of them that you see on the left side, all of them are English language and English literature related apps available on mobile phones. Whatever kind of phone you are using, you just can download one of these apps and you can make learning easy for you. The one that I've written on the right side, the top one, Hello English, is the one that I've been use, using for the last one or two years, I think about two years, and this is a really good, exclusively, I mean, especially but meant for Indian students, because it's bilingual. It allows you to learn English through the local language. For instance, if you, when you download that, it asks you what language uh, as the medium you would like to learn English. So if you want to learn English through Telugu, so you download that and then automatically every day you get some lessons. Lots of features are built into it. It's very interesting also. Once you begin that, it's very difficult to put it down actually. Right? It, 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 learning almost is fun. It's a game. like It's built like a game. And students, like they get addicted to lessons, uh, games, no? So they also can or may get addicted to this. It's so wonderful. I'm not promoting it. What I'm telling you is that there are apps like that. So they help you uh, interact with each other because many of these apps also allow you to post questions. Suppose I have done a lesson and then I have not understood something, I can post a question. Some of them have higher paid versions where personalized instruction, a right? custom built instruction also is possible. 
So every student has access to your teacher. Great. Or you can just learn the general courses. So they also have built in tests, various kinds of tests. So they, they check what level you are and where should you begin. Everybody need not begin from lesson one. And if there is a student whose English is already good, maybe you can start from 142 lesson. And the app decides that. So it, it administers a diagnostic test. And based on your performance, based on the correct answers that you've given, the system decides. So where should you begin? Right? What level is appropriate for you? And so there is entertainment there, there's engagement there, there's learning there, and it's affordable to everybody. Hello English, as I told you, is a free. Again, of course, there is an advanced paid version. Maybe some teachers, in case you want to learn and go to higher levels, perhaps you can pay otherwise. It's not necessary. Zero cost. There are lots of a Grammarly is good, Duolingo is good, Busu is good. Uh, some of them allow online and offline learning both. Okay, today it's a $200 billion enterprise. I don't think I can tell you how much is that in Indian currency. Maybe several lakhs of crores. So much money has been spent in creating these apps. And so much business is there in that. In fact, if you are working in a good college, uh, maybe teachers working in engineering colleges, particularly where students are really capable, you can ask your students to create their own mobile apps and your lessons can be there. You can help them or with your students and with the help of other English lecturers working in your college, all of them together, and then you can create your own college app. Right? Great idea. You can do that. Okay, and the last slide in this section is online learning tools, other than the ones that I've already told you. So how to improve your listening, reading, speaking, writing, even vocabulary, grammar, etc. I told you already, but in addition to that, there are also lots of websites like TED-Ed and the teaching with movies, future learn, etc. These are all very good. Just to tell you something about TED Ed, uh, TED is uh, a platform where the best of the speakers are invited to speak on different subjects, right? They need not be English or it need not be any subject. It can be any subject, but you can go to TED and you can identify some lessons that interest you. And TED Ed is slightly different. TED Ed is a platform built using the TED lessons, the TED speeches. So the TED speech is used to build a lesson on that. So an interesting topic delivered by one of the best speakers in the world, right? And based on that, a lesson is created. So you can add your questions, you can add whatever you want, right? And then you can make a lesson or somebody has already created a lesson for you, for everybody, and you can use that same lesson. If you think that that lesson can be used without any modifications, so it's in the free domain and you can use it. I like that many other resources are there. Please become aware of them and begin building your skills. All that I want to tell you is that please don't stagnate wherever you are. You started maybe two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and all these 20 years you've been teaching and 20 times you taught the same thing again and again and again. I think what has happened? Nothing. Maybe you have earned 20 increments in your salary, but no significant improvement has happened to the quality of your teaching because you have not learned much. You have not improved your skills. You have not updated yourself. Let that not happen. So if you want to work today, right, you must be current, right, proficient in the technologies that are used around the world today. That's exactly what I'm trying to impress upon you. So please update yourself and upskill yourself. Let's move on to the next part of the presentation, online teaching. We have seen how to learn online, but now I would like to spend the next 10 minutes perhaps on what can be done to become a better online teacher. I have only two or three slides, but let me just tell you. So you must be comfortable using at 
least one of these platforms. <laughs> these are all <clears throat> video conferencing tools. Right now, the meeting that's being hosted now, when I, as I'm speaking to you, we are using this GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting and Zoom are almost similar, except some small differences. Okay, so GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, Zoom, WebEx, I click meeting, Google Handouts, and Microsoft, and everyone, every big name has created a video conferencing tool now. If it's a small number of people, you can use even Duo and others, but because you want to use it for a class-like situation with about 40, 50, 100 students in your class, so you can use these platforms. What do these platforms do? These platforms help you webcast your lessons. Like I am going live now, as I'm speaking to you, you can watch me wherever you are. You need not move out of your house. Sitting in your house, maybe using your mobile phone or laptop or whatever, you are listening to me, you are watching me, I'm what I'm showing you, and you are learning and I'm teaching you. The same thing you can do for your students. In many colleges, right, these softwares are already, the licensed versions are available. Either government or private management have purchased licenses and they are made available to the teachers. Or you can use some free versions of each one of them. Zoom offers a free 40-minute webinar up to 100 students. Suppose you have, I don't think many colleges have classes larger than 100 students each. And even if there are more than 100, perhaps you can split them into two. And you can have parallel sessions or two different sessions or whatever. And 40 minutes, suppose that 40 minutes is over, you can start one more class. So it does not mean that your lesson must be finished in 40 minutes. Okay, 40 minutes is there, but after you close that 40 minute installment, perhaps the next day, the same day, or after half an hour, after two minutes, perhaps you can have one more link, one more class. Right, go to webinar, go to meeting, also have free versions, right? Or if somebody, a colleague in your area, in some other college has a license, suppose the principal of some other college in your village or town, has purchased a license. You can request them to allow you to host a meeting on the, because they don't lose anything. Usually these licenses are for a month each. When you pay the license fees, it lasts for one month irrespective of the number of events that you host. I mean, let me explain. Suppose I have a Zoom license for 250 students. And for these 250 students, whether I host one meeting or 5,000 meetings in a month, the license fee is the same. Interesting, no? So that's why, so in case there is somebody else in your locality or in your area or in a neighboring college, and if they have a license, you can take it from them. If you have a larger classes, if you have longer classes, or if you want some advanced features that are not there in the pre versions, perhaps you can try that. Otherwise, the free versions also are good. But what I'm telling you, you must, every teacher must use at least one of them. The first two are most popular. And there is also a rumor that Zoom is Chinese. It shouldn't have used. It's wrong. Zoom is not Chinese. Right? None of them, none of them I've shown you is a Chinese product. And even, I mean, let me not go into that politics, but then don't worry. All of them are good. All of them are useful please use them for your classes. So, so this is one important assurance that you must give me. You will start using to make, to create your own online classes. Right? Will you do that? Yes. So use any one of them and create lessons. Right. The second thing that you must do is to have your own LMS. LMS stands for a learning management system, which allows you, which allows you to administer the class, to keep documents, and then to hold examinations, to track the progress the students have made, and to create progress reports, and to interact with students. All that you do in a physical class can be done online also with greater ease, greater comfort, greater accuracy, and greater speed. Right? For instance, in a regular class, what do you do? 
So you create your curriculum in case you're autonomous and then you choose your materials and then you teach and then you hold your tests, you record, uh, you keep maintain lots of different kinds of records and you, I mean, uh, what do you, 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 you score the papers, uh, answer sheets and you maintain various kinds of records, right? So now all that can be done online also. There are tools available to you. Again, free versions are there for people like you. The one that I generally uh, recommend is Edmodo, the first one, E-D-M-O-D-O, -O, the first one, edmodo.com. But all these are equally good or everyone offers some features that others may not offer the same features. Every one of them has some advantages over the others, but I think Edmodo, Moodle, these are Blackboard, all of them have re uh, really good features that meet our needs. Okay, so choose any one of them. I don't have time to tell you what exactly it is, how you can do, how you can open account, how you can, all that I don't have time to tell you, but I'm just introducing you to the concept. Just go. Self-learning packages, 99% of the features you can learn on your own if you have a little time and if you're passionate. If you're interested, just experiment. Just type that address, take a screenshot now and choose any one of them or maybe choose two or three, compare them for yourself, go to Google, search on them. I mean, go to that website and create an account for yourself. Many of them demand that you should create an account, you should give your email address. There's nothing wrong when you share an email address. I think there's nothing very confidential that anybody can steal from you. Right, so give you a share your email address and start using the facilities. The free versions you can try and if you are really happy with that and if you want to go to a higher level, if you want to produce online lessons on your own, if you want to become a future online teacher, perhaps you can buy the paid versions of them. You can try them. So this is an LMS, learning management system. Uh, what we do in the physical uh, brick and mortar class now happens online. So two things. One, you must be comfortable uh, using any one online platform like Zoom or GoToMeeting or whatever. And you must have at least one account in an LMS, an online LMS. Okay, like Ed model. So these two things you must do. Okay, if you have these two things, what do you do? Suppose you have these two. I mean, not difficult for you to think, I think. Right, what, what can you do? So once you have these things, again, for instance, suppose you open a Zoom account, free, you, you take a free account. Then again, don't go to Zoom and then just give a classroom lecture. Suppose you just stand in front of the camera and uh, speak for 40, 50 minutes and uh, your your class is over do you think you can finish your class like that right then what is the difference so you are teaching inside a physical class now you are teaching in front of a camera that does not make you an online class you must at least have a slideshow like i have now you must at least have one or two videos like i've tried now right you must at least have something else that you, you are offering more than the physical classroom. Just because you stood in front of a camera and taught your class, you don't become an online teacher. Online teaching is not standing in front of a camera and teaching. You must have something greater, something more uh, interactive, something more productive, right? something more student-centered to make your classes really online and to call yourself an online teacher for that these things will help you okay right so i have created two uh, links for you i would like you to try them today um, in case you want to test your students these two tools are extremely not there are again many hundreds of them i have chosen two which i like and which i've been using for some time the first one is myquiz.org in case you have a notebook around, please note down this number at the bottom, 456721. Or maybe you can take a screenshot of this. Okay, please note down, 456721. 
this will be available to you exactly at six o'clock today. So what do you need to do? You need to go to www.myquiz.org. I repeat, www.myquiz.org. And then it'll ask you for the key. Type this number, 456721. Shop at six o'clock. If you are late by one o'clock, perhaps you cannot enter that. Right, so maybe five minutes ahead, you log in and then at that, I mean, you type this uh, number in that and then it will tell you, please wait for four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. And when it's exactly six o'clock, the quiz starts. There are only five questions there. I mean, not to test your knowledge, but to tell you that there is a facility like this available. And once you enjoy this, once you, once you solve this, you can create a quiz like this for students also. Again, it's free. So you can create up to 50 questions and you can have uh, 50 students participating at the same time, completely free of charges. If it's more than 50, 50 students, perhaps you need to buy a license, but for 50 students, no. Suppose you have more than 50 students in your class, do it twice. Do it at one at six o'clock, one at seven o'clock, one today, one tomorrow. It allows you lots of things. Maybe for instance, if you have 50 questions, you can shuffle them. Or you can, lots of options are there. It's very difficult for me to tell you all those things. Maybe if you experience that, you will know how easy it is. So you can have multiple choice questions and you can have fill in the blanks. You can have 10 different kinds of questions possible. You create your questions and then you get, I'm sure students love taking an examination like this instead of the routine, written, boring, that essay questions where all that you test is only rote memory nothing else so please try this okay and the second one i would like to introduce you to is uh, edpuzzle.com this the last link that i have showed here right e d p u z z l e dot com slash open edpuzzle.com open and give this second link that i am giving the key the entry key the student key is cal key b you have to type K E L K I B I all small letters. K E L K I B E. This will be open anytime from now onwards. You can do it even immediately after this class over at one o'clock, but it will be open till 10 p.m. today. After 10, one, you cannot do that. What is this? This is also a kind of a puzzle. This is slightly different. What is this puzzle? This part, this is actually, this is based on a video clip I have used to introduce you to how you can create your own video lessons. What I did is I took a two minute video lesson of my own presentation from somewhere. And on that two minute video lesson, I have created one multiple choice question, one one word question, one audio question, one just additional note, one word meaning like that and within that two minutes. So as you play that video, you also, as the video progresses, you have those questions to test your comprehension. I'm telling you only a part of it, but I mean, I'm sure you will enjoy doing that. So as you go ahead, you will see how you can, I mean, you, you know, need not even create your own videos. You can borrow a video from YouTube or maybe some other video that's available. Tomorrow, this video will be available to you, right? So, and video like this, perhaps you can use a small clip of that. You can cut that. Any video can be trimmed, right? Clipped, right? Cut. And then a small part of it can be uploaded onto Edpuzzle. And on Edpuzzle, you can create your own assessment, quiz, whatever. So try these two to get an idea of what you can do with online learning and teaching. I'll show you a short video about the future and then towards the end, I'll give you one or two tips and start maybe in the next 10 minutes, we'll close. I think it's 11, eight now, right? So see this video, this is about the future of online learning. Okay. Students whose schools are have applied both and really pushing their artwork. It's really important that students who are Virtual reality has been around since the 90s, but now Facebook and Google are no longer in your face. 
Google's expeditions program turns smartphones into virtual reality tours using simple and expensive cardboard. And now that Facebook's bot offer is in, they're planning on getting into classroom gaming as early as next year. This is the first kind of editor that might get you into the popular crowd. 3D printing in schools is revolutionizing the art of show and tell. These printers can make machine parts, jewelry, and guns. Yesterday's arts and crafts is now modern day engineers. Elementary age children are already Remember how you had to lug around heavy books and then swab them out for other heavy books in your office? Well, now there's the cloud, saving students from that problem. But the cloud could also give teachers direct access to data on students' study habits. By doing all their homework online, students provide engagement data on how long they spent on their assignments and whether or not they're taking notes. There's a bonus, though. Major publishers could use that data to judge how effective textures are, so teachers should be recycling that boring algebra book. <laughs> Biometric technology taught fingerprint scanning to borrow library books and iris scanning instead of ID cards. Teachers will even be able to tell if you're concentrating or not during online courses using eye tracking technology. Yes. <laughs> like old school projector, but in 3D. Remember Michael Jackson's back in the day performance? Well, hologram technology classrooms is still just a new for now, but in the future, it would allow teachers to give lessons to students across the world. Imagine taking a tour of a historic 3D model of the Colosseum right from your desk. The potential for new technology in the classroom is pretty amazing, but will it cause students who are plugged in all the time? Okay, that's going to the future of the classroom. And I'm sure all of us are getting ready to be there. So in case I'm not ready, as I told you already, somebody else will throw me out and come into my place. So not only for that, but for lots of other reasons as well, I must be ready for the future. And the future is not somewhere far off. The future is already here. The future has already begun. The next moment is my future. And that's why let's begin building my skills. Finally, before I close, I just would like to give you some two or three small assignments for today to establish that you have learned something from here and then going a little more, I mean, equipped. So the first thing that you need to do today, right, is to visit at least one or two websites that I have suggested. So what's the first assignment? Visit, just visit, that's all. Just spend some time, half an hour, browse, and visit any one or two sites that I have shown to you. It can be a listening site, a reading site, a teaching site, an LMS, right, a platform, conference, whatever. Right. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing, the second assignment that I'm giving you is that every one of you, I think there are about maybe 40, 50 people here and whoever is here. Uh, the second thing that you must do is today itself, before you sleep, you must create at least a one minute, two minute video lesson of your own. Whatever you are, whatever subject you teach, irrespective of what you are, and irrespective of what position you hold, you may be an English teacher, you may be the head department, you may be a principal, or you may be some teacher of some other subject, school teacher, college teacher, whoever. So what, what should you do? You must create, create your own one minute, two minute video. What do you do? You just take your camera, your mobile phone, and just hold it in front of you or place it somewhere and stand in front of that teach whatever you want, any topic, any subject, not long, one or two minutes, two minutes, any subject that you regularly teach in the class, you teach in front of a camera, two minutes. After you've finished teaching that two minute lesson on your video, what can you do with that? First thing, if you're not happy with that, you delete that, okay, no problem, but, but do it today. 
If you think it's good, you share it with a few friends, right? And then ask them for some comments, guidelines, etc. And if you get good feedback or if you're happy that you've done well and then your lesson has come well, share it with larger audience. Maybe you can post it on YouTube. You can post it on WhatsApp. You can post it to all your students, to a larger number of your subject colleagues, right? And you have become an online teacher then, of course, if that's not the end of it, that's, that's the beginning as I'm telling you, but the journey has begun. And in case you would like to experiment further, in the next two or three days, after you have satisfied with the two minute clip that you have created, you can build a lesson on that using something like a puzzle, for instance. So you can upload that and you can create a video lesson based on your own video, right? So three assignments, please do them. I'm giving you my email ID, lionnagaraju at gmail.com, L-I-O-N-N-A-G-A-R-A-J-U at gmail.com, lionnagaraju at gmail.com. In case there are any questions about what I have taught you today, so please feel free to write to me. I'll be very happy to receive your comments, your questions, your suggestions, etc. And let's be in touch. Uh, I will uh, finish here. And if you have any questions, maybe you can post them in the chat box or you can, I think if you are unmuted, perhaps you can uh, speak and uh, I'll try to answer them. I uh, ask Raji Lakshmi to coordinate and then in case uh, she would like me to answer any questions, she can read out the questions and we'll spend some five, ten minutes on that if there is time, I'm not sure. So I'm... Mm. Um, I request Rajya Lakshmi to come back alive and then uh, take over. One second. Uh, sir, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, sir, your presentation was very persuasive. First of all, uh, uh, my name is Dr. Karthik. I'm from VIT. Uh, so I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of your presentation today because uh, Whatever you have shared, I hope uh, people watching this uh, webinar can get a PhD with that because <laughs> the information that was shared, you know, if they can uh, run into the information which was shared by you and if they can collect data and uh, organize in much better way, I think they are eligible to get a PhD itself. So you, are, you have given lot, lot many information on different aspects. Uh, so, so thank you very much. Sir. It was uh, it was really good uh, being a part of this because uh, though though I am from technological institution, uh, I am afraid whether uh, people working in different technological institutes are aware of all this uh, uh, information. Uh, probably, I request Raja Lakshmi to record this video. I think you are recording this video, but I wanted you to uh, share it in YouTube to many people working in uh, different areas of uh, teaching. So, uh, so that you know, many can uh, make use of this service. It was wonderful uh, being a part of your uh, presentation. So, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. I will certainly do that. Most of my videos are already there on YouTube.